this was a great fight man from the very first bell very first round man dubois came through and knocked aj down people were couldn't believe it right people except your boy check this out <laughs> I think that Daniel Dubois will win, but will I be shocked if AJ wins? No, I think it's a I think it's a 50-50 fight. I'm just leaning towards Daniel Dubois, man. I mean, I'm not trying to brag or nothing, but your boy kind of did call this one, and people were talking a little trash, saying I ain't know what I was talking about. It's boxing, man. It's a great fight. You know who wins? Us. You know, Dubois actually won, but we win as a fans. As long as it's a great fight, it's a great fight. So I don't really uh uh uh, uh put too much energy into bragging when i'm right because i'm wrong sometimes too but i'm i'm right a lot more than i'm wrong you know what i'm talking about if i tell you i'm good probably you will say i'm supposed to. But if i tell you i'm no good you know one line <laughs> Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Dr. PGNGM. Praise God to get money back for another YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, man. I don't know what time it is. The doctor's in the house, man. So today, we had another phenomenal day of boxing, man. Courtesy of Big Turk. I'm talking about... Whew, <laughs> this this car was just great. It was spectacular, man. Now, I have to bring up my dose because there were six fights, and I don't want to miss any one of them when we're recapping it. You know what I'm saying? So let's get to the re capping right now because there's no cap in my rap let's get right to it man first off we had mark thunder chamberlain going against josh padley man a lot of you know him as patty that's what we call him we call him patty but mark chamberlain may call him daddy you know what i'm saying after that spanking he just took from him you know what i'm talking about no did he i'm talking about man th this was a way this was a great way to start the start the car to start the day because you know it was an upset right out the gate man josh patty was coming in they're both undefeated you know josh patty was 14 and 0 i believe mark chamberlain was 16 and 0 so somebody's o had to go you know how the saying goes or the cliche is and that's exactly what happened man josh patty coming in as an underdog he dropped mark chamberlain i believe in the eighth round going off the top now so if i'm mistaken forgive me but i believe it was the eighth round and he just didn't look back man and he upset old thunder man and he took the victory you know what i'm saying by upset man and he it was well deserved man shout out to patty and shout out to mark chamberlain as well for for putting on a good show man and mark chamberlain's one of big turk's favorites so you know big turk was a little you know probably, probably taken aback back and didn't expect that but you know shout out to big turk for putting on good fights man he put on good 50 50 fights that's why it's so great man so next up let's go up we have josh kelly going against ishmael black panther davis now i might have a controversial take on this but you know i'm gonna give you the background man so the background of this fight is that you know josh kelly was fighting liam smith but liam smith had to pull out a short notice so ishmael davis took the fight on yes you guessed it short notice man in six days six days not only a short that short notice but he was coming up from 154 to 160 you get you guessed it six pounds six pound difference to cover up in six days to me that's that's kind of crazy that's a tall task but i was like okay man the young man ishmael davis is he's confident because you got to be either confident or stupid to take a fight of this magnitude you know what i'm saying and, and such a short notice and that's what he did so i went with him man i was like okay bet you know i think ishmael davis they must know some vulnerability on josh kelly that they could exploit you know because why else would you take a fight under these circumstances so i think there's you're going to come out looking great or you gonna come out looking foolish and unfortunately for ishmael davis he came out him and his team came out looking a little foolish i believe that that was um very ill-advised you know um it was a close fight it was a good fight and ishmael davis looked good in that 12th round you know but he needed to fight with urgency like the same urgency that, and intensity and fervor that he fought with in the 10th in the 12th round he should have fought like that from at least the eighth round and beyond so in my opinion he just you know there's the only time there's moral victories is when there's a payday, you know what I'm saying? Like Edgar Berlanga, right? Edgar Berlanga going against Canelo. Nobody really expected him to win. But the fact that he looked good, even as a loser, he looked more impressive than we thought. And he's getting the biggest payday of his career. That fight doesn't look too bad. So you can kind of count that as a moral victory. Same with Esau Pippo Cruz. He took the fight against Javante Tank Davis as a late notice. He was fighting Tank, who's considered one of the top fighters today, right? And he lost, but he didn't get knocked out. He wasn't embarrassed. So his stock rose, you know, and, and he got a big payday, right? But Ishmael Davis right here, unfortunately, Josh Kelly, he's just not that caliber of opponent you know he fell off after he lost to david avidesia a lot of people don't believe in him a lot of people even call him a bum i don't think so i still think he's a good formidable fighter obviously but he just doesn't have the name to carry a big payday like that you know for you to take 
on a short notice so you have to win if you're going to go go up against those circumstances so in my opinion with ishmael davis not doing not winning and and um i think that his team kind of led him astray by even allowing him to take this fight under these circumstances my personal opinion but if he would have won he would have came out a hero but josh kelly fought a tough fight and he came out the victor he came out victorious in the tough fight man shout out to ishmael davis i'm still gonna be interested in him i think a lot of people may you know not look his way as much but i think he's gonna bounce back in fact he has a fight coming up very soon so i would like to see ishmael davis bounce back and i'd like to see where josh kelly goes from here josh kelly won that you know very in, in, in a very close fight but i think the scorecards were even closer than the fight actually was to be honest now we have anthony kakasi versus josh the uh <clears throat> excuse me josh the leeds warrior warrington right so they had a good fight you know anthony kakasi pretty pretty had him he handled it very well you know he pretty had he pretty much had a um a definitive chokehold on the fight even though it was actually packed man it was a great fight for both sides but kakashi uh, definitely won that fight and then at the end you know it seems like josh war josh the warrior warrington man the leeds warrior warrington seemingly retired man he placed his gloves in the middle of the ring after the fight to kind of indicate that this might be the last time we see him so if it is big salute to him he had a great career now we've seen quite a few uh fighters retire lately right we see marriage bradis in the cruiserweight division uh hang him up we've seen uh danny the miracle man jacobs hang him up you know and um uh, and uh we've seen J john gorilla rider hang him up and now we're seeing josh warrington man and i, I want to applaud them because it's always good to see the fighters you know not wait till the sport retires them but make a conscious decision while they have all their faculties to make you know to decide to to retire so big salute to them for knowing when to hang it up before they you know and, and before they get damaged permanently and, and they can actually move on to the next chapter and then the next chapters of their life after boxing so big salute to them for knowing when to call the quits next up we have joshua boatsy versus willie hutchinson man you know this fight was crazy because you know they had a lot of bad blood a lot of things stirring and you know it, it went into the ring and hey you know they didn't withhold no punches figuratively or literally or literally figuratively or literally so it was a good fight man they went back and forth for a while until joshua boatsy dropped him not once but twice man the only thing about this though while willie hutchinson is a tough fighter he just upset craig spider richards in the last 5v5 queensberry match room frank warren and, and eddie hearn respectively um this fight you know i thought it was a little bit too much for for him you know i thought it was a little much more than he could true um and 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 he proved me wrong though he looked impressive again you know he, as as the underdog he talked himself up and he spoke a good game and he backed it up you know what i'm saying just joshua watson was too much you know with him and under the tutelage of virgil hunter a great trainer also trained uh andre ward sog you know son of god one of the one of the one of the great fighters as well all time great hall of famer you know he was in his corner and uh joshua watson definitely overcame the trash talk and the fight in the ring which we which was what we thought but it was a, it was a close fight man but i will say this though joshua watson you know we expect him to challenge the winner of better be even bivol we had for the for a while we always want to see him in anthony yard as well but for joshua bossy to be a top guy at the light heavyweight division you have to pack up and put away a guy like willie hutchinson no disrespect to willie hutchinson but he should not be on your level you know you should demonstrate that by at least getting the stoppage and winning more convincingly so from that standpoint our expectations of joshua bossy being a top guy i think he fell short today and i think but you know it was a good victory because of the <clears throat> Oh, excuse me it was a good victory because of the trash talk that willie hutchinson was doing prior to the fight you know and all through the build-up but to be to be blatantly honest this was kind of a letdown because if you're boatsy and you have these expectations i think that you're falling a little short however congrats on the win man don't win but i, I don't think he's ready for the winner or the loser of better be ever before i'll tell you that you stay clear away from them but it but it's crazy i don't know when you're going to be ready if you're not ready now that's just my personal opinion but hats off to boatsy next up we have tyler denny and hamza shiraz that fight went quicker <laughs> that fight was went more quickly than it took me to say the names of who was fighting i'm talking about hamza shiraz went in there and handled business man got him out of there in two rounds however i will say this tyler denny i think the ref kind of did him a slight injustice i think that when once you get up as a as a as a fighter man and he was on the count of eight you know he did look a little shaky look a little shaky baby but he the ref could have gave him a chance to walk it off you know I, I really thought that it was it was a premature stoppage however i can't say it was a bad bad stoppage i can understand why the ref did it but he but but tyler denny got up on the eight count and then he just looked t a tiny bit wobbly and and the referee didn't trust it so he called it you know for for for, for the for the betterment of, of tyler denny but i think in that situation you give him a chance to show you otherwise and prove himself even though i think 
the story was already written. Ham Hamza Shiraz had that in the bag. And so I'm not too upset. However, if I'm Tyler Denny, I'm probably upset. I feel like you you didn't really give me a fair shake on that one. So shout out to Hamza Shiraz for handling business. He looks like a threat at 160. The rumors are that Jenebek didn't want to fight him. You know, I think that, you know, Hamza Shiraz needs a title shot at this point, man, against either Carlos Adamas or Jenebek or even Arizlandi Lara, who we just saw beat uh, Danny Garcia. You know, I think Hamza Shiraz deserves that chance. However, at the end of the fight, he said he wanted to fight Chris Eubanks uh, Jr. So I'd be interested in that fight too, but I don't think Eubanks is really on Shiraz's level, in my personal opinion. You know what I'm saying? Now let's get to the meat and potatoes. The final fight, man. We got Daniel Dynamite. Wow going against Anthony AJ Joshua, man. This was a great fight, man. From the very first bell, very first round, man. Dubois came through and knocked AJ down. People were, couldn't believe it, right? People except your boy. Check this out. I think that Daniel Dubois will win, but will I be shocked if AJ wins? No, I think it's a, I think it's a 50-50 fight. I'm just leaning towards Daniel Dubois, man. I mean, I'm not trying to brag or nothing, but your boy kind of did call this one, and people were talking a little trash, saying I ain't know what I was talking about. It's boxing, man. It's a great fight. You know who wins? Us. You know, Dubois actually won, but we win as a fans. As long as it's a great fight, it's a great fight. So I don't really uh, 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 put too much energy into bragging when i'm right because i'm wrong sometimes too but i'm i'm right a lot more than i'm wrong you know what i'm talking about so uh your boy knows what he's talking about however i think that as long as it's a good fight it doesn't matter and that's what this was is indicative of a great fight i always said that man this fight is being undersold of how great it is globally you know what i'm saying and, and how much impact it has on the boxing game because the boxing goals the sport of boxing goes with the heavyweight division man and once the heavyweight division is turning up like it is where we have a great battles like dubois and anthony joshua then that means boxing is in a pretty good space right now man and anthony joshua big salute to him big salute to daniel dubois but daniel dubois was not going you know you know they had the infamous sparring session well daniel dubois said okay y'all heard about that in the background let me bring it to the foreground and put it in front of y'all face in the public i'm telling you i'm not going and somebody was going and it wasn't dubois it was actually anthony joshua so you know anthony joshua uh, uh to his credit he fought back you know those one time i can't remember what round it was i want to say it was the fourth round don't quote me but he dropped he uh dubois dropped anthony joshua in the midst of dropping them you know in the midst of his combination anthony joshua both his gloves touched the canvas and the referee missed it however you would think this was to the betterment of joshua no it's actually to his detriment because if you watch after that um after that transpired where both his gloves touched dubois kept swinging and anthony joshua took at least five more punches that he probably wouldn't have took if the referee would have caught that first initial knockdown so now anthony joshua actually took more damage and a lot of people say that the referee was looking out for joshua well this case he didn't look out for joshua because if when he missed that initial knockdown of his gloves touching the canvas joshua would have took more time you know he, he took more time to recover and less of a and, and less of a beating because it was at the end of the round the referee would have saw it did du dubois would have landed five more shots like he did so it actually uh didn't work out well for joshua that was kind of a bad ba a, a bad missed call you know um but then they kept going right they kept going and later on uh joshua catches dubois with a good shot and then is in the midst of him coming forward daniel dubois being the fighter that he is you know what i'm saying he swung back and connected bow and that's when the fight ended man that was it anthony joshua couldn't recover from that man he was face down booty up in the air you know what i'm talking about no did he yeah just like that so you know shout out to anthony J joshua man he definitely fought back shout out to dubois for handling his business and you know this was really the first big test for ben davison and anthony joshua you know their tandem because his last four fights you know who did he fight he fought jermaine franklin robert helanius um otto wallen and and francis and ganu man so those aren't really too much of a threat so while ben davidson and, and anthony joshua have looked good this was the first legitimate test against a young hungry lion and capable formidable opponent and daniel dubois man and i think that he failed that test but i gotta tip my hat off and salute uh ben davidson because at the post at the at the post press conference you know when he was fielding questions he said you know i got a lot of praise for anthony joshua's success so rightfully so in this time of a loss i want to take a, the majority of the responsibility as well because I, I need i need to be at the forefront of that as well so i thought it was i thought it was very uh um credible and humble of him you know and i thought that was very a good representation of sort of a responsible human being to take accountability for the wins and the losses as well so salute to davidson and then you know but the biggest salute has to go to a uh, salute to anthony joshua as well again but the biggest salute has to go to daniel dubois you know he had the label of being a quitter uh a label of having no heart from when he fought joe joyce and, and alexander Usyk. he was battling that and he demonstrated that hey man that's behind me that's in the past i was young i'm still young but i'm older now more mature and hey man i'm here 
to stay. And those of you that said that, oh, you know, when he beat Joshua, I'm mean, sorry, when he beat Hergovich and he won an intern belt and then he was elevated after Usyk was stripped by the IBF, a lot of people were saying that, oh, he's not really a champion. He's not really a champion. He was elevated. I don't respect it until he defends it. Well, he was a champion. He was a position to, uh, to be a champion after he beat Philip Hergovich. And so he was a champion. You're saying it wasn't enough then until he defends it. Now he defended against AJ. I want to hear y'all move the goalposts on the young man now. He was a champion then and he reinforced that he's even more deserving to be a champion now. So big salute to Daniel Dubois, man. You know, and, he, and, and also too, you know, it's interesting because the rumor has it, the legend has it that Frank Warren signed Daniel Dubois based on his sparring match with who? Yes, you guessed it, AJ. So now that he just it just comes full circle and he showed the world this is why he got signed and this is why he's a champion, man. Shout out to Dubois, man. I think that I, I think that this is a great redemption story, man. You know, he fought those labels and he showed that he has the not only does he have heart. Not only is he not a quitter, but he has the best heart you can have, and that's the heart of a lion, man. He fought back when he was hurt, man. But big salute to AJ. AJ definitely tried, and I, I, there's no shame in it for AJ. But those of you that were talking like Dubois was not a challenge, and, and he wasn't the biggest challenge for AJ, you know, obviously he was, you know, because let's face it, Joshua's best wins up until this point were Klitschko. Klitschko was 42. Damn. I'm sorry. And then Alexander Povetkin, who was 39, going on 40, you know. Uh, Joshua had the good wars with Usyk twice, you know, losing by split decision and unanimous decision. But Dubois is definitely the most capable fighter that AJ's fought in a while. And he proved that, man. So now the options for Dubois, of course, he has a title. You know, he still has a title, retain the title. I think he's going to be looking for the winner of Usyk and Fury. And that could be potentially for Undisputed. Especially if Usyk wins, that would be the rematch. And it'll be a rematch for Undisputed. So that'd be great. Now, if Fury wins, we'll most likely be looking for a Fury and Usyk trilogy in the future um but even fury and dubois would be great too you know so dubois has a lot of options and let's get into aj's options man aj a lot of people are saying that he should retire now nah, i think he's still a formidable capable fighter i don't think he needs to retire but if he wanted to he's been through some fights and he could you know he could if he wants to do that you know he carried british boxer for a while him and tyson fury um so i wouldn't blame him for that but as far as his skills being diminished no anthony joshua he's always been chinny but he's a very capable fighter a strong fighter that right hand people aren't aren't, aren't going to be able to withstand that you know so i don't think he has to retire but if he did want to that's cool so let's talk about if he didn't in the case that he didn't want to retire let's think about who he could fight you know what let's keep that for the next video man i appreciate y'all rocking with me as always remember with god we do anything without god we're nothing and stay tuned to the next video or the live stream where we will discuss aj's options in the scenario in which he does not decide to retire but y'all be easy we out peace catch y'all on the flip side the doctor's out from the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets